In this video, we're going to talk a page builder that just bit the dust. It stopped development. We're going to talk about why a lot of those reports like GT metrics and other types of reports that might be run within your website, I think are kind of meaningless. Open up the discussion on that. Plus, I'm going to give you a few updates here on the channel. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non techies if you're new here consider clicking on the subscribe button you can join as of me recording this over 50,000 almost 50,000 51,000 other people that are subscribed here on the channel and if you want notifications when new videos go up there's going to be a little bell next to that subscribe button click on that YouTube will let you know when a new video is uploaded so first I'm going to just give you a little news on the channel I'm just going to spend a brief couple moments on it if there was any questions and kind of update you on on some things this is kind of like a weekly wrap-up video right now first of all the big thing is this channel hit 50,000 subscribers about five days ago it's already almost at 51,000 but five days ago it hit 50,000 I wanted to thank you for all your support on this channel for those of you that are subscribed and have kept coming back I, I couldn't do this without you I mean if if I was uploading videos and no one was watching it or engaging there was no community being built I wonder how fast or how soon it would take for me to get burnt out. And I probably would get burnt out pretty quick. And so I want to thank you for supporting this channel. And if you're not a subscriber, consider, consider clicking on that subscribe button. You might not know this. I also have a second YouTube channel right here. You can visit it by going to youtube.com slash my my full name Adam Prizer. A lot less subscribers and a lot less action there. But I'm starting to upload videos there that are different from WordPress, but it's a lot a bit a lot about how I um the the what went on behind the scenes to build the WP Crafter YouTube channel. I talk about equipment, techniques, stuff like that for growing an audience online and getting your personality what is you to come out online. So you can check out that channel if that that interests you and I want to talk about the video quality I know my video quality was getting good and now it's back to this I'm stuck in the bubble again and that's because I don't know if you saw a video from about a week or two ago where the camera I had bought it was a thousand dollars to buy this camera it was having focus issues and that camera actually was known to have focus issues so I had to return that and I am in between cameras right now so I'm back to a webcam as you can see and I'm kind of in a transition because I've got, you know, I'm stuck in this black background. It's not like any of my videos before. However, I'm working towards getting that all resolved and I'm sure in the next week or two I'll be back in business with a better camera. Uh, the next camera I'm buying is about $2,000. It just gets more and more expensive, but that's all right. So that's what I'm working on, and that's why the videos are like this. But I decided, you know what, I'm just going to roll with it. As long as the audio is good, as long as the content can help someone, I'm just going to push ahead and do it. I want to update those of you that knew that I got a YouTube strike. That is when, some, when YouTube's automated systems thinks one of my videos has violated some community guideline. These strikes go in place, and because of that, you lose... For, th for 90 days, you lose the ability to stream live to YouTube. And this, I was a victim of this. And getting my, the process is you file an appeal and then someone has to manually at YouTube look through that appeal. And they have been lousy with this whole entire process. The, the appeal is still sitting there and it's been five weeks. And I've talked to YouTube on live, ch uh, live chat support. I've hit them up on Twitter. I, I think what ended up happening is they created a, disaster for themselves by just automatically taking down so many videos on so many channels they're probably just buried in appeals so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to roll with it and keep positive if I have to wait out the 90 days oh well also Facebook has been making some changes as well making it harder for people to live stream there so I'm just gonna have to wait until June so that I can start live streaming here on the channel again I just accept it I'm gonna keep up the fight but I'm just going to accept it 
I want to let you know some of the things that I'm working on and some of the things to expect. So next week, I'm going to be releasing probably daily videos, and it's going to be pretty much a week dedicated to learning management systems, uh, tutorials with it, helping people choose the right theme for it. I'm going to be talking about the different plugins, too. I'll be talking about LearnDash, something I haven't talked about much on the channel, and some of the options there as well. So it's pretty much going to be a week dedicated to that. However, if L Elementor Pro version 2 is released next week. I'll probably be doing double videos, so I'll have Elementor-related content, and I'll also have this learning management content. Someone in the comment section asked the other day, or I think it was might have been on my website, left a comment why I, you know, am not making much videos about Beaver Builder, and I'll just be transparent and answer that question here in the video. I don't make many videos on Beaver Builder because no one watches them. You know, I'll put up a video about Beaver Builder in a video about Elementor. The Beaver Builder will get maybe 600 views on it, and the Elementor one will get 6,000 views in a short period of time. So, you know, I, I, I want to not have this be all about Elementor, but that's why if you're a Beaver Builder user, you're probably not seeing a ton of content on Beaver Builder, but I think Beaver Builder is great. And I do have a, a video coming out on some of the mobile responsiveness improvements that Beaver Builder has made recently. Yeah, I want to definitely do that. All right, let's get on to some of the news. Uh, one of the things I wanted to tell you about is if you haven't been to a WordCamp, these are two-day events that are going on in cities all around the world. And it's a two-day event. It's extremely affordable. Here in the U.S., I know it's $40 a ticket. I think it's like dirt cheap, all like that everywhere. And actually, the event... The $40 doesn't even cover the cost of the event because it includes lunch and there's different speakers and there's different people in the WordPress community. WordCamps for me are not something that you should, for me, that I don't see that I'm going to go to regularly. However, I did go to the Orange County WordCamp last year in 2017. I'm probably going to go this year as well. If you're planning on going, though, you better go and buy a ticket like ASAP. The tickets have been on sale for one hour, and they've already sold uh, maybe a third of the tickets. There's only 226 remaining. No guarantee that I'm going to go. I might go, uh, so we'll we'll see for sure if I go or not. But I did buy a ticket, and when this attendee page is live, you will see a picture of me that I am going. I might change my mind depending on uh, certain factors. Okay, second thing I wanted to show you something really cool. Uh, Thrive Architect. Okay, Thrive Architect was a the second version of Thrive Content Builder. They came out with a, an upgrade and they changed the name to Thrive Architect, which was smart. I haven't talked about it too much on this channel. Um, I've had a few videos about it, but I know some of you guys are using it. I wanted to show you these really cool landing page templates that they released today. And I've been expanding the course on my website that I have on Thrive Architect. And so I've been really digging into it pretty deep. I might have a few videos in the future on it. So uh, they have all these built-in landing pages. There's a ton of them. And here's some that they have for local businesses, but they released these three variations today. And they're really interesting. I've installed this one health food shop. Now, one of the neat things that they have that I don't see in other page builders and because of it, it allows you to do unique things that they're really highlighting on this page. They have this element called a content box and it's a little tough to wrap your head around it when you're first using it, but then this is a perfect template that they put out that shows you what this thing is and what makes it special. So on this page, you're going to see lots of interesting shapes. So you've got this image and it has this shape. Well, it's actually their terminology is a decoration. And this is essentially a content box and it allows you to, it's kind of like a column in a page builder, but it allows you to apply these decorations to it. So this is a decoration right here. So if I expand decorations, you can see it's it's applying, actually, is it a deck? Actually, that's not a decoration. I, I think I got to back this all up. I, you could probably do some of this stuff in your page builder. What it's actually doing, this is actually just a rounded border. You know, actually, I think most page 
street builders will let you get a rounded border on particular corners. So that's actually what this is. If I click on borders and corners, you can see it's putting a 270 degree pixel, whatever, how that would be. The terminology for that on these corners, I actually thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, here's another example of the content box. So here's the box. They made it round and green, and you could put a gradient, and then they just put an icon in there like that. It's a very creative use of their elements. Here's another one where you have this content box creating this shape again, and then you have an image in it. And I don't think, I think the image probably has that drop shadow. It's not being actually applied by the builder, or maybe it is. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. And then when you scroll down here, here's another creative use of it. There's uh, layers here. So here's a content box. And then here's a content box, and then here's a content box. And so you have these ways of layering in a better way than you would get with other page builders. And then it has this really neat breadcrumbs. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. And last thing I thought was interesting, you could probably do this with your page builder, is here's a two-column row or section. And I like how they put these like features here and then they had a divider line pointing to the image. I just thought that that looked really neat. And I like how in this content box right here, you have the image and it has the border. And then it's also giving you these rounded shapes. I found it, this uh, landing page very impressive. Be interesting if someone here tries to do some of these things, maybe me on one of the page builders we talk about and use a lot on this channel, which is Elementor and Beaver Builder or even Divi. Here's another actually interesting use. You can see a divider being here used here, rounding out the edge of this column right here. Let's see if, what is that? Maybe that's a content box as well. So you have this layering and dynamicness going on. Okay. Another page builder bit the dust. I actually made a video last year about a page builder that bit the dust. And they just basically said, you know, uh, Gutenberg's coming out. And they just saw the, the deck, the cards were stacked against them. And here's another one that did the same thing. You might not have heard of it. I don't talk about this on this channel that much. Why don't, where, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Upfront Builder. Uh, WPMU Dev. It's kind of a membership type deal where you pay them a fee and you get access to all these plugins. I don't talk about it because I don't really find any of the plugins that great. However, if you were using something called WordPress multi-site, I would say definitely this is where you want to go. But they, they have like a security plugin, a caching plugin, a pop-up plugin. They have all these various plugins. Although I find that other people, in my opinion, make them but better. So anyways, they made a page builder. They started making it in 2015. I was actually keeping an eye on it at the time because I thought it was pretty neat what they were doing. Uh, but if you go to their blog, you'll see this blog post right here. And this is dated the 12th, which is just yesterday. It says, saying goodbye to Upfront, focusing on what members want and embracing Gutenberg Divi, Beaver, W Bakery. I'm surprised they don't put Elementor in there, which has 700,000 active installations. Basically, I think because their business model that upfront was kind of a flop. And I think the reason why Elementor has grown the way it has is they they have a better business model than some of the other page builders. And their business model is simple. Let's put a free page builder out that is better than some of the paid page builders out there. But let's sell a version that can be added to it that will give developers what they want. And developers are usually the ones that open up their pocketbook and make purchases. And because of that magic formula, you've seen Elementor just take off. And I think what we're going to see is a lot of page building plugins kind of throw in the towel. Because, I mean, if it doesn't make sense, if you're not making money and you're spending more time on it and there is no end in sight, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, it might be time to tell your users this is a hard decision, but this is the decision that we're making. I take no uh, happiness in seeing anyone or any kind of 
product fail or anything like that. But I tend to be very pragmatic and look at look at it from an analytical perspective and say, you know, a lot of these don't even have a chance. And that's why on this channel, people say, oh, check out this page builder or this page builder or this builder or this, that and the other. And you know what? I, I, I keep an eye on things. I definitely keep an eye on things. I, I monitor things, but I can usually tell when something's not going to make it. And, you know, it's not a big deal with some plugins, right? So say you need a contact form and so you're choosing which contact form builder. There's no lock into a contact form builder. You can change your contact form at any time. So it's not that big of a decision. But what you are using as the cornerstone to build your website, that is a big decision. And so that's why I'm ultra careful with what... Uh, products that I'll even talk about here because if I had made a bunch of videos on up front and I really believed in it but but then this happened and now all those people that were on the channel and they thought it was great too uh, and then it ended up flop flopping I would feel so responsible for that I would feel so horrible that I'm now giving <laughs> I gave bad advice uh, even though I wouldn't have been in control so that's why I have to be a little bit more careful with some of the products that I recommend. So even though uh, some other tool might come out tomorrow and it offers some things that some of these page builders don't have, that really doesn't mean anything and it's probably not really that worthy of attention until they show that they are getting traction and that they're going to be able to be in it for the long haul. So really what you see happening, I think, is uh, with Gutenberg coming out, it's going to be the nail on the coffin for a lot of these tools. So that's the deal with Upfront. And I don't think they got much traction with it at all. Uh, I just think it was, um, wasn't the greatest page builder. And they had it in this locked ecosystem of people that probably weren't even willing to give it a, a try. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about reports are meaningless. So... Uh, two days ago, iThemes Security, I've talked about it in the past, they released a version 5 of their plugin, and I guess the main new feature of it, I didn't look at the change log because all they really talked about was this security report. So now there's a tab, you click on it, and it will show you a security report on your website. And so here's the security report for my website, and you can see that I'm, I'm getting uh, an F for the security of my website and then there's some stuff explaining it but when I looked here at the security settings uh, these are just settings that really are not standard meaning people are using this as a standard a lot of them <laughs> look at these one two three four of the contributing factors to me getting an F is that I don't like two-factor authentication I don't like two-factor authentication. I find it very inconvenient. There's no way on God's green earth that I would force the users of my website to use two-factor authentication. And because of that, I get an F on this report. And there's also something here where, you know, it only knows what it knows. I It says I don't have database backups. Well, the reality is I'm not using their tool for database backups because who on earth would use a tool just for database backups? You have to have a more comprehensive backup solution. So if, if I wanted a better grade from this report, I now would have to enable the inconvenient two-factor authentication, have dual backup solutions running and uh, taking away from the resources on my hosting account at the same time. I, I just want to make the point that these reports, if you're a web developer and you're making websites for your client, I, I feel for you. These reports, they're really nonsense. They're complete and utter nonsense because... You know, it says F. And so if you have a client and they log in and they say, oh my gosh, I'm getting an F. And then now they're banging down your door. This is this is an example that you probably wouldn't run into as much. An example that you do run into is GT Metrics uh, or uh, Google Page Speed Insights where you your client goes there, you've given them a website and they take the URL and they plug it in there and says, you know what? Your website is getting an F. And so then they come sending you an email, making the phone call to you saying, why is my website getting an F? This, this is ridiculous. 
But then you have the uphill battle of explaining to them that GT Metrics, what it's basing that off of, it's complete nonsense. Okay, I will give them that there are some guidelines in there that would be good if you could implement. But in a WordPress environment, you cannot, you cannot always in every scenario meet all of those requirements to get an A. It's just not feasible. It's just not even practical. But they're coming and they're only looking at that letter grade. I'll tell you, I have seen, and i was been running some tests for a video that I'm going to make on how to choose a WordPress theme and my thinking that goes into it. And it's just to enlighten people, to help them make a better decision on the theme that they choose and the tools that they choose to use. And one of the themes that I was using, and it just so happens to be one of the most selling themes, I, I tested it on GT Metrics on one of its demos, but on my hosting, and it took 15 seconds to load the website, yet GT Metrics gave it an A on all those categories. And that's when I realized through talking to some other developers that those GT Metric scores are actually easy to manipulate if you're a theme developer, there's ways of manipulating it to get those A's. Now, it's not a theme developer's problem or, or there, there's no like ill will with them or there's no bad intentions by making these little tweaks just to get that good score. Yet other aspects, the aspects that matter the most, they're not really paid attention to as much because what they're doing is their buyers are saying they're, they're doing the same thing. So their, their buyers are taking the demos, putting them in GT metrics and running these scores. So they have to have those A letter grades and do whatever it takes to make it say an A, even if the load time's not good. And there's actually a more important metric, and that's when a website is actually usable. A lot of people don't realize this. You can go to one of those page speed speed testing sites and it might say the website loads in one and a half seconds but what that's not taken into consideration is the parts of that website that need to load in order for you for the visitor to actually begin using the website and what that is called is TTI and it's something that is only a newer term maybe in the last year and a half and there aren't even any tools out there that will measure TTI TTI stands for time to interaction and that's when the the, enough of the website is loaded so that the visitor can actually start interacting with the website. I've got a video coming that out on that as well. So one of the things I'm trying to accomplish is to create some cornerstone content that people can send to their clients when they get challenged with these questions. So if you have a client coming to you saying, oh, you delivered this site, it has an F on this tool, well, you could send a link to this video that I make and it will explain to them how what it's using to derive that F is not necessarily important at all and what really matters is the load time, the time to first bite and the time to interaction. That's all that really matters. If some little thing is not loading the way that that reporting tool wants it to, it's really meaningless if those other three things are in order. And also the video about choosing a theme. This is going to be perfect for you if you are a website developer and you have clients coming to you saying, I want you to build a website, but I want you to use this this particular theme because it's like the number one theme. Instead of you having to sit there and explain to them why it's a bad idea to use that theme, you'll be able to reference the particular video on it. I've got a lot of good analogies that I've been working on to really drive the point home why, uh, how, how, what should be guiding your decision on which tools to actually use irrefutable. This video will be absolutely irrefutable. So anyways, I've got all of those things coming up. Uh, so anyways, this was just like kind of a weekly wrap it up. I wanted to update you on some things, talk about some of these new events. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and ask down below. I know I opened up a lot of cans of worms for discussion, uh, but if you have anything to add, I'd love to hear 
hear from you down below in the comments section. Lastly, let me say thank you for all the support on the channel. I really appreciate it. I couldn't do it without you. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.